Ladies and gentlemen, this next podcast will be scheduled for one fall with a 15-minute time limit hailing from Brooklyn, New York, Nicholas Jason Lopez, and on the other side of the ring, his website, ProWrestlingOpinion.com, your home for pro wrestling news, reviews, and so much more. Thank you. Hello everyone, welcome to the third installment of Intermission, 15 minutes of rambling about pro wrestling. I figured to to put the connection between rambling and wrestling together, and, and I and, uh, you get the idea. Uh, it's been a pretty good week so far, uh, just did a couple of interviews, uh, Dynamo Pro Wrestling based out of St. Louis, Missouri, shout out to them. Gonna have an update soon on Pro Wrestling Opinion. Uh, obviously, if you're listening to this, you're probably there, so feel free to check out some other stuff before that goes up. Did an interview with uh, Mike Outlaw, their D1 champion, and Luke Roberts uh, gave us an update on what's happening, so f- check that out. I uh, want to just fill you all in on the latest happenings of Pro Wrestling, obviously. <laughs> Again, the three letters that have come about are AEW. The buzz of the week has been, well, Chris Jericho. (laughs) And uh, a big story that broke out, or a lot of people were pointing out on Facebook that little things... And WWE is very smart about this, too, because why promote a guy who just joined a a quote-unquote rival organization, though they're nowhere near... You know, this that kind of success. I mean, mainstream, mainstream success. But they got all the places, you know, really going. So there's there's no limit to really what they could do in, in, in this day and age. And they kind of had the power of social media to do it. Um, so again, kudos to them for, for making it work. I'm really excited to kind of see how the shows are going to develop over the year. But... They're playing the internet right in the palm of their hand, so that's the best way to do it, honestly. Uh, just looking at my Facebook feed, um, one of my friends, Joe, uh, shout out to you. <laughs> uh, just going to just read this out loud. Wow, the WWE really pushed hard to sign the Young Bucks and Hangman page. Read that Bucks met with Triple H for 12 hours in total. I, I can't sit with anybody for 12 hours, so if they could stomach that, well, <laughs> kudos to you. And so it continues, uh, they offered them a three-year deal for big money with an opt-out after six months if they were not happy and wanted BTE, being the elite, to be a weekly WWE Network show, and they offered Paige a deal that paid him like a main roster guy, but to be in NXT. Uh, it, it's pretty much no secret that WWE would have to try to do anything possible to stop AEW's momentum, and Triple H has one of the best strangleholds on the independent scene, so it's it's not really a shock that they would seek out their names, you know, it would kind of just squander AEW completely, but it's become really clear that that's just not going to happen, and, you know... It's strange to it's strange to me at least if you're, if you're gonna sign a guy and you're gonna say well we're gonna make you a world champion that kind of gives things away I mean yeah it's it's the quote unquote dirt sheets and all but I don't know it feels weird to promise a guy a title because yeah, if you don't deliver then that just gives him more ammunition to elite the company just little things like that I don't you know WWE does things their way and it's it's worked for years and years and years but i mean are they doing things a little bit old-fashioned in the new day and age who's to really say but i don't know it, it would be hard to get guys like that you know to to sign up for you if you're if you're throwing in you know supposedly sugarcoating the length of the contract I mean that that's all that's all I could really say about that for now but 
you know, AEW, they got PAC, they got Jericho. Um, another funny thing I saw during the week uh, going around on, on Facebook was uh, the latest string of memes with the... Uh, with like somebody random and the AEW logo in the background with a gray picture, uh, Danny DeVito w- w- was in it, <laughs> and it, it 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 just gives off the impression that all right, well, this is the newest signing for AEW. That it's pretty much classic. Um, internet never stop, never stop. Internet, please, please, please. Coming across a picture, uh, there's a picture of John Cena waking up in a hospital bed. John Cena wakes up in a hospital. John Cena, where am I? Nurse, I see you, John Cena. No, you can't. Well, that was really inspiring, so I'm going to just go ahead and feel free to share that on the PWO webpage. Facebook page, rather, not webpage. Does anybody say webpage anymore? Nobody says webpage anymore. That's not a thing. Also, another popular meme coming about was uh, John Cena slowly turning into Ernest, and <laughs> I mean, that comparison is pretty much spot on. I don't know what John Cena is doing with his hair, though. It's 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 becoming a creature in its own. He he always looked best with with just with just the buzz cut. I don't know the. Mm. Growing the hair out isn't really working for me. Kind of looks like Jerry Seinfeld when he got a haircut in that episode. I mean, you don't wanna, you don't wanna upset Uncle Enzo. You just, you just really don't. But if you have a hairstyle and a face that really makes you turn into Ernest, you may want to rethink your look. Seeing a article come about from SBNation.com, a headline WWE seeing its first major competition in 20 years, and they're worried. Well, goddamn right they're worried. I mean, nobody has come out with buzz like this. Which, which again, brings me to say that AEW has, has obviously been planning this. They probably took the last year or so to to get all the big names possible they're stringing along everyone and and even supposedly there was a rumor going around that jim ross is supposed to be the voice of aew i mean who else can they bring on uh, it, it's a, it's it's really exciting actually because it's the first time that there actually has been buzz about a about a big company and well there's nothing better than that Hopefully, it develops into something good, and, you know, the AEW fad doesn't fade away, but, you know, they're, they're, they're playing hardball, and, you know, the sky's the limit. Uh, coming across a PlayStation Memories Facebook page, which is giving a shout-out to the SmackDown 2 Know Your Role intro, and I can't say they're wrong. Yeah, they're definitely not wrong. I would play the snippet of the audio, but I, I don't want to run into copyright things, and, and people will be knocking on my door with pitchforks, and I just, I just I, I, ain't nobody got time for that. But I will admit, it was very true, and even just looking at the montage of both Rikishi's ass just dropped into my face, I, that's a sentence I, I really never wanted to say, and I really hope I never say it again. But, eh, whatever, whatever. Uh, still looking, still looking. Uh, <laughs> uh, slice slits in. Uh, this looks a little satirical. I have just received the facts from All Elite Wrestling. It was a contract offer. I ripped it in half immediately. Seems like some people are thinking it's real. Well, pfft. Seeing another post, uh, Hulk Hogan, uh, thank God Ronda tapped out. I didn't want to drop the big leg on her brother, HH. And there's a picture of him and Ronda with, uh, I, I don't really get it. It's, uh, I get he's joking, but the, the, the font of the, of the post just, it's just really, it looks like a fifth grader wrote it. It's strange. Hulk Hogan is the the mecca of pro wrestling, and he is not smarter than a fifth grader on social media. Gonna just... Uh, 
So seeing another seeing another post from Matt Men Pro Wrestling Podcast. Shout out to you. I like that name. <laughs> uh, the WWE offer to the Young Bucks was insane. Three year offer for millions per year, bringing BTE to WWE Network plus a six month window to leave if they were unhappy. All this was to stop AEW from starting. <laughs> well, that worked out well. So I'm seeing it a second time, and you know, looks like it's. Pretty much gonna, pretty much gonna happen. AEW is a thing. They're so far in that there's no going back now. So WWE is really, really, really apprehensive. I can't blame them, but it's gonna be interesting to see how they deal with this kind of competition. AEW needs to come out of the bat, go well, come out of the gate swinging, which is what you do with a bat. So hopefully it's something like WCW in 1997 and not like TNA 2004 or WCW 2000, if you kind of follow my drift. Uh, Got another satirical post. Dave Meltzer has reported that Kenny Omega will wrestle in a ring in 2019. Well, that's, that's pretty much about right. Uh, another meme, what operating system does Marty Jannetty use? Windows 91. Bum bum psh. WCW Nation posted about the floating ring from Club Lavella. Now, I actually love that idea, and I'm going to just drop a, drop a love symbol on there. You know, it really would be nice if you, if, if, if they would make a thumbs down, like, you, you have emotions now, you could be angry at a post, you could say, wow, you could be sad, but I, I, what about if I just want to say, I, I hate you, I don't like you, hate is a strong word, but dislike is a little bit better accepted, come on, Facebook, drop that in there, it was a pretty cool idea for a ring, I'm sure somebody ended up in the water, it, it would be a, a something I, I did like about WCW is when they had themed shows, they really went all out with it. You know, Sturgis, the, um, they had the Panama City Beach, they, they emphasized the beach. WWE used to have really fun stages, but now it's like, it's the same universal LED screen and the logo, which is, I mean, the logos are cool and all, but it would be nice to kind of live up the theme, and WCW is really good at that. If AEW really wants to stand out, they should do something similar. Don't don't have a setup like ROH. You could still have a pretty LED screen, LCD, whatever the difference is. A fancy TV screen is what I'm getting at. You can have that, but... You know, put some dice, put some big dice on the stage or something. That sounds a little fully loaded 2000, I know. But listen, we're in 2019. It was 19 years ago. If anything, it would be a throwback. People would appreciate that. So if anybody from AEW is listening, take my words. Roll with it. People, people will dig it. They'll say, throwback Thursday, way back Wednesday, set me back Saturday. That should be a thing. I'm making that a thing. Hashtag set me back Saturday. Or send me back Saturday. Set me back, send me back. They're interchangeable. You can do whatever you want with it. All right, coming across another snippet of Eco Warrior Daniel Bryan. Hashtag Earth First, where he pretty much just goes ballistic on a concession stand. Mocking consumerism is the new black people. Uh, not black people but black comma people. You get what I'm saying. These are things when I when I write words down, it comes out a lot better, but the, these are the perks of a podcast, so we're going to just roll with it. I love this character, and if you were going to make Daniel Bryan a heel nowadays, what better way than to send Fairway Frank out, you know? Or, or Trader Joe, Trader Joe Travis, or Whole Foods Hank. I was debating some names for this for this gimmick, so those were the ones I came up with. I sent out a pretty decorated tweet that got zero responses. Boo, social media, you suck. Well, hopefully, if you're listening to this, feel free to, to search that out. You can find me on Twitter at Nick Jason Lopez. I know, pretty imaginative. I'm also on Instagram at Nick underscore 1192, which was also my Snapchat while we're feeling the social media. Pretty much. And 
looks like the um, the flow is stopping here. Want to thank you all again. This has been intermission. Ba da ba.